There is a place called heaven, whether you see it or not, that doesn't change the existence of God's ultimate plan for our life. What is that plan? In Jeremiah, he says that there is a plan. God has a plan. Sometimes we're like, uh, can I suggest a plan B? <laughs> That's what I was doing. Because heaven didn't seem real to me at times because I didn't see it. Some people think I only have one foot just because they see only one foot, but I have a little second one right here. <laughs> and it's always there. God's presence is always there. If you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved and healed and redeemed. I don't know if God's going to give me arms, legs in this lifetime, but I'll tell you just one quick story of why I have joy in my life. Thank God for my parents, first of all, and my family for loving me through that. But eight years ago, I was here in this area speaking at a church, and a little boy with no arms, no legs was in the crowd. The father held him up, 19-month-old little Daniel Martinez, no arms, no legs, little foot just like me, and I'm like, wow, that's so cool. We're going to wrestle later on. <laughs> I got the father to bring him up on stage, and everyone was looking at him, and people were crying. I looked at him. He's looking up at me with his big brown eyes and a big smile. And when I looked at him, I remembered when I was at school, when I was getting teased, when I was getting bullied, when I felt alone, when I was broken, when I was depressed, to the point of an attempted suicide at age 10. I tried to drown myself in our fam family bathtub because I felt alone, I felt worthless, and I felt life was pointless. If there is no point to my suffering, then if God's not gonna relieve my suffering, then I'll do it myself. But by the grace of God, I did not go through with that because of the love of my parents. But I thought one way of really seeing a miracle would be if God would send a limbless man to my school and talk to all these kids about bullying. That would have changed my life. That would be classed, in my eyes, as a miracle. But when you don't get a miracle, you can still be a miracle of God for someone else. It's that 15-foot radius around you, the people you come into contact with. People notice my smile. People notice when I look them in their eyes, they're like, what's a guy without arms and legs smiling about? Well, I, I love God, and he has set me free. The only cure to death is resurrection, and because I believe I'm living forever and ever and ever, not that just heaven is real, but Jesus is real to me now. He carries me when I cannot walk. And if God can use a man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet, then God can use you too. If God used my broken pieces, then God can use your broken pieces. If God caused a lame woman to walk in India in front of me, he can cause you to walk if you cannot walk. But let me tell you about the love of God for a second. This old woman in India, she looked about 144 years old. I mean, she was, she couldn't close her mouth because she was that weak. She looked at me, she was trembling like this, and through a translator, we spoke to her. Where were we in India? In the red light district of brothel houses, 150 brothel houses where 10-year-olds are kidnapped and sold by their parents sometimes for $700. Forced into sex slavery. That's where we were going to preach the gospel and we went into a home and this old woman was sitting down on the floor. Her sister walks in and says, stop talking about your God, stop talking about Jesus, show me that he's real, make this woman walk. She said, I don't wanna hear about your God, let me see it. So I sort of took a step, step back and I'm like, okay God, you know that she's putting you on the spot here, not me, right, you know that. <laughs> You're not putting me on the spot, she's putting you on the spot. I just want you to get that here. <laughs> so we prayed about it, uh, uh, prayed for her, prayed um, just right there and then with even a camera rolling. And the first time she tried to get up, she couldn't get up. She was trying to stretch her legs out. She hadn't walked for four years. She's never left that front door for four years. 
they carry her to the restroom. She, her sister was saying that she was dying. Now, we prayed again. She got up all by herself. She started jumping up and down. It was a miracle. But here's the miracle, who that woman was. That woman wasn't just any woman. That woman was the one who started that whole red light district 45 years ago of organizing sex slavery, getting the pimps and the madams and the kidnappers and ruining and destroying thousands and thousands of girls' lives. And God healed her. God pursued her. God pursues you every day, every breath. For as long as you are breathing, the door of mercy and grace is open to you. Adam and Eve, who had no belly button, by the way, were with God in the Garden of Eden. God wanted us as a family. For as long as Adam and Eve did not sin, that one sin, they would be with God forever. The fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. As soon as they sinned, God couldn't be in their presence because he is God. He is holy. God is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He created the universe. He created everything we see and we don't see. Who am I to say, hey, God, you, you owe me an explanation for this. He's God. Who am I? Who am I that I could demand, hey, God, please tell me what you're going to do with me and then I'll trust you? It's as foolish as me having a broken house and the best carpenter knocks on my door and I don't let him in because I want him to explain what he's about to do to fix me up. Jesus is the healer. He loves you. Don't deny him into your heart just because you don't believe that you're not good enough for his love. That's the amazing thing about God's unconditional love. He pursues you and when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart, let him in. I hardened my heart. I didn't think he could do miracles with my broken pieces. But man, you know, when I was a kid, I, I never thought I'd get married. I have a beautiful wife. Her name is Kanae. We have a little baby boy, nearly 18 months old. His name is Kiyoshi. He's already my height. <laughs> he... You know, I used to be worried about how am I going to hold my wife's hand when I was a kid? Would I ever get married? Would I ever have a job? When my parents saw me, the doctor said I'm not going to be able to walk. They had no idea what God's vision was. They were looking for hope, but they found it because they were looking in the right place. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 says, then you will call upon me, come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. It's verse 12 and 13. Beginning of 14, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I love what Rick Warren says. Who, who better to tell you what your purpose is than the one who made you? That makes sense to me. It doesn't make sense just to live for the sake of living and existing. But when I look at my life now, not just the blessings that I have, but even meeting that little boy with no arms and no legs, imagine that day that we meet up in heaven and he runs to me with his legs and he hugs me with his new arms and I hug him with my arms and I'm standing on my legs. I can only imagine what will come out of our mouth. Glory to God, number one. God, you are good. And the second thing I think would be shared is Daniel saying, Nick, thank you for helping me believe that this place called heaven was real. See, you can't have faith that you can pray for a miracle. But when your miracle doesn't come, still ask for God's vision. Search for God's vision in your life. I see some of you teenagers with gray hair and no hair here. I can see all of you from here very well. <laughs> and God has you here for a reason. He's not done with you yet. 
There's still another person to hug. There's still another person to pray for. There's another missionary to send seed in and prayer for, someone to comfort, a child who has no grand, grandparent. You can be that, you know, that cute little grandma that gives them all the candies. You know what I'm saying? Like that in itself, you may not think that that goes deep, but love is the greatest answer in the world. And there was no greater love than this, than Jesus Christ who died for your sins, that if we are not forgiven, we are not perfect, therefore not deserving of heaven. Man, that's a bigger problem than having no arms, no legs. I mean, that would be cool to have arms, legs, and go on a bike and smash into a pole and break a leg. <laughs> but how distracted are we sometimes? I want arms and legs, I want arms and legs. Oh, if I can just get that job, then everything's gonna be happy. And many single people are like, well, if I can just get married, then I'll be happy. <laughs> if you're not happy single in Jesus Christ, you're not gonna be happy married, amen? amen. Can you hear an amen again? Amen. Those are the married people. So my question to, and by the way, my wife loves me and I love her, where our marriage is fine. <laughs> but our foundation of our marriage is knowing that we cannot do anything without Jesus. You can have stuff, but what's the point of having stuff? You can give me a billion dollars, but if my wife dies tonight, if my mom dies tonight, if my cousin dies tonight, money's nothing. What are you looking for? Hope? Purpose? Come to Jesus. He's the only one who was holy and perfect. He was the only one who said he was God. He's the only one who did miracles the way that he did. And before he raised himself from the dead, he raised a couple other people from the dead. He's real. He's God. Don't harden your heart as you hear the knock on the door. He loves you whether you're running away 100 miles an hour in the wrong direction or not. He loves you right now. He can help you. He can, and only he, can heal your family, can heal your mind, and make you a new creation. Does that mean now I wake up every morning and say, <laughs> good morning everybody, don't you feel the Holy Spirit today? You have ups and downs, correct? See my foot, ups and downs, ups and downs. <laughs> but the question is not, how are you doing? It's wherever you're going, are you going with God, in his strength, with his plan, or your plan? My parents, vision of my life. They thought I would just be laying down the rest of my life. They never knew that I could type 43 words a minute on a normal computer and do surfing and scuba diving and skydiving. They never thought that their limbless kid would be a 31-year-old evangelist in 2013, meeting seven presidents, speaking at five congresses, and 400 million people around the world heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. I get goosebumps on the skin I don't even have when I, <laughs> like that's amazing, that's God. That's nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with what broken pieces he used. I just gave him my heart and I said, here Lord, here I am. I don't understand what you have for me, but I trust you. Give me arms and legs, but if you don't give me arms and legs, take my heart, heal my heart, renew my mind. I wanna live for you. It's ironic to me that when you plant a seed in the ground, it has to die before anything grows. Isn't that weird? It's weird to me. When I let my own will, my own plans, 
be surrendered. Say, God, take over. That's when he brings live, beautiful things out of dead, broken bones, dead, broken dreams, torn pieces of my heart and my mind. He says, I got you. And when you cannot walk, I'll carry you. And when you mourn, I'll be there. I am with you. I love you. I have a plan. Trust me. Do you mind if we have some music in the background, please? Just, I'll play piano, but I'm not warmed up yet myself. <laughs> but I just want you to know something. That I, I didn't see at all what was coming. All I saw was me like this, alone for the rest of my life. And I tell you, man, it was only two weeks ago that my child hugged me for the very first time. You see, how long the hug is and how frequent we hug is actually not up to me. It's up to him. It's like our relationship with God. He's there as soon as you wake up, waiting to converse, to speak for him to hear your prayers, to say hello, hi dad, I love you, thank you for another day, I need you, I can't do this without you, heal me, give me strength, give me your wisdom, and that is a daily relationship with him, reminding yourself of the promises of God, is an active relationship with him that will transform you from the inside out. This is the word of God. This is the Bible. God has breathed on this scripture, on his word. Don't be distracted by any lies taking you away. When you realize it's just the devil. Everyone say, just the devil. Just the devil. You know why God gave me one foot, right? So the devil can be my footstool. <laughs> but when you realize it's just the lies of the enemy taking you further and further to even a point of giving up, when you realize that you're going home no matter what, you're in God's hands, when you commit your spirit into his hands, to all those lies and all those fears, to the devil you can go <laughs> You talk to the foot because the ears ain't listening. <laughs> and you turn around and you take one step at a time. Lord, teach me to pray. Lord, teach me your word. Lord, give me your peace. Lord, give me your strength. Help me to be self-controlled. Help me to love others like you love me. Help me to forgive others as you've forgiven me. I am free, man. I don't even remember the last time I prayed for arms and legs. I don't need them. I need him. Do you have him in your heart? Is he an idea or... Is that relationship real every day you live? I'm not asking you how holy you are. I'm not asking you how long you pray. But have you died to your vision and your fear and your confusion? Just said, God, take over. Have you done that yet? I'm jealous of some of you gray-haired teenagers because you're closer to the finishing line than I. But then again, maybe not. After all, this could be the last time I'm on stage. Correct? But that's why I smile. Because every day, He is with me. He is mine, and I am His, no matter what. Continue to seek the Lord with all your heart. 
Lean not upon your own understanding. Trust in Him. He'll direct your paths. You will find Him. And He'll be everything you'll ever need. If there's anyone here in this place who can say, you know what, Nick, I don't have an active relationship with Jesus. And I don't want to live one more day without Him. I know I'll never be good enough to go to heaven and I want to ask Jesus into my heart to forgive me of my sin that I may know him. Is there anyone here today who can say, yes, Nick, I have not been walking with Jesus, but today I don't want to live one more day without him. If that's you, stand to your feet right now in this place. If you know that you have not made your life right with God, just stand where you are. Don't worry, I'm not going to lay hands on you or anything. But right now, if you know within your heart that God's calling you, don't harden your heart. Say, yes, Lord, please come in. If that's you, just stand right now. It only takes the first person before other people stand up. Do not be afraid. You can stand up with a friend. But there is always a couple people who will say, yes, Jesus, come into my life. Is anyone here today? One. Anyone else? Just stand, two, three, four. Anyone else? Let's give God the glory, amen. Anyone else? <laughs> Last call, is there anyone here? There you go, one more. Anyone else? Just quick, if you're thinking about thinking about it, stop thinking about it and stand to your feet. In Jesus' name, enough's enough. You don't want to do it your way. You want to live God's. I see you. That's two more, three more. I'm going to wait. Give you five seconds. Five. Just stand. There we go. Four. Keep standing. Three, two, one. Awesome. There are about 12 people standing. Let's just pray as we are. Would you say this prayer out loud with me? Say, dear God, I come to you today and I thank you for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for all of my sins. Please forgive me. Come into my life and heal me. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to live for you. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I want to know you more. Give me faith to live out your plan. Comfort me and strengthen me. Every day I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God a shout of hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Maybe you didn't stand up, but you said that prayer. Please tell someone here at this church that you did say that prayer. We want to follow up with you. We don't want to just give you a Bible and say, good luck. Um, we really want to help you with the next steps. No matter what you feel right now in your heart, how rejoicing your heart may be or at peace, tomorrow morning you might wake up and say, okay, what do I do now? Um, we want to help you there as a church and email us there if you're watching online or on TV. I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to hug anyone here because I'm just scared someone's just going to pick me up and take me home. <laughs> Guys, God bless you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. And Bobby, thank you so much. God bless you.
Would you rise for the benediction? Pray that you leave here filled with joy and encouragement. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.